A popular and very helpful activity that NGPF has in their curriculum is calculate um, filling out and completing a 1040 form. This is a great activity that gives students some hands-on experience in filing taxes and completing a 1040 form. Hi, my name is Amanda Volts. I'm a personal finance teacher at St. Clair High School in St. Clair, Michigan, and I had created a teacher tip video previously on this activity, but NGPF has now updated the activity, which makes NGPF so awesome because the tax laws changed, so NGPF went in and updated the activity. So I'm giving you another teacher tip video on how I incorporate this activity into my classroom with some tips and some implementation ideas. So under units, um, I'm in the unit section of the website. Under taxes, you'll find the activity that is calculate completing a 1040. Before you do this activity with your students, I do think they need some background and base information on taxes. A great introductory activity is this one right here, which is comparing tax forms and their purpose. Um, I did a teacher tip video on that one also, where students learn the difference between a 1040 form and a W-2 and a W-4 and learn what all those forms are. Another great one to do prior to this activity is this one, which is should they file a tax return? And it looks at whether a person has to legally file a tax return, and maybe if they don't legally have to, should they be filing a tax return to get a refund? And then finally, I kind of end my tax unit with this completing a 1040, which again is a popular and great activity because they're gonna have multiple characters, five, and they're going to complete a tax return or a 1040 for those characters. So I will tell you that I teach mostly 12th grade students and my classes are about 55 minutes in length. And with the way that I kind of alter this assignment and use it, um, which I'll explain to you, it takes my kids the full 55 minutes to complete this activity and assignment. So um, what students do, the other thing I guess I should tell you is I'm a huge Google Classroom user. So I have a classroom set of Chromebooks and I use Google Classroom. So what I do is I post this activity that you see on your screen onto Google Classroom. So because these five characters that we have, all of them have a W-2 form, so they, um, by accessing this document on Google Classroom, they have access to the hyperlinked W-2 forms. So they can access all of that by just clicking on the form and having it in Google Classroom. There is also a hyperlink for the 1040 form if you wanted your students to do the digital forms. Personally, I print out the 1040 forms, and I just feel it's easier for students to have the character information in the W-2s on their Chromebook, and then have the paper that they can be filling out. I think it also helps in preventing cheating and sharing documents and all of that, which I know happens anyway, but it just seemed to work pretty good in having the assignment document on Google Classroom, and then the 1040 forms print it out so they could then fill them out, especially for something I do at the very end of this activity. So what students have is they have five different characters, like you see. Each one of them has a W-2 form, and then the students will complete a 1040 form, and again, I just told you how I do it with paper, for every single character. Then when you kind of scroll down here, they will put in here whether they got a refund, if they owed money, and how much. And then because I do the paper 1040 forms, I just delete this row right out of here. So the students type in here, because they have this document on Google Classroom, but they're doing paper 1040s. And then there's some other reflection questions that are on here. So here's how I do this with my students, is I do Melinda with them. And the reason I do Melinda with them is when you look at Melinda's um, W-2 and start filling out her 1040, Melinda has some taxable income. So Melinda's a great example to do with them to then show them the tax tables that they get the information from. Edgar here is going to have zero as his taxable income, so it makes it as an easier form, I think, to fill out. And there are some instructions here as you're, as you're working through this, but the reason I pick Melinda is because on this line 11 right here, when they reference the tax tables, if I just throw students into that, they're very confused. So we do Melinda together for that purpose. And then I have students complete Edgar, Angela, and Marcus on their own. And you can kind of see behind me that I have big table groups. So students will be working with their peers at a big table to do Edgar, Angela, and Marcus. And they can like check with each other and see, you know, what, what their figures are, what their 1040 looks like with their table groups. So I do Melinda with them, like on the smart board. 
And again, my reason is because she has some taxable income and teaching them how to use the tax tables. And then they'll do Edgar, Angela, and Marcus on their own. So what about Boris? I save Boris for an assessment later on. So I do like what's called a collaborative quiz and I'll give them a quiz later and um, they can work with their table groups and partners and whatnot. And I say, the only thing they can't do is they can't ask me questions. I actually let them use um, the information from previous activities like the tax forms and their purpose and all of that to do that collaboratively together. But that's a whole nother kind of teacher tip video. But I save Boris for the assessment part of this. This, um, this unit or this activity. And like I said, doing those three on their own takes a good part of my hour for them to do that. And remember, they're doing it on paper. That's how I implement this. So then when students have their refund amount or how much they owe, they'll type it right in here. And again, I delete Boris because I save him as part of my assessment for this unit. And then um, at the very end, NGPF as part of this activity has audit a classmate. And here's how I do this. Because I'm kind of crunched for time. I guess I could go into a next class period, but I have just that extra kind of five, 10 minutes, maybe once they got all of this done. Because they're working in table groups, what I have students do is as part of the audit, I guess, process, is I have them stand up and find a partner in the room that's not at their table group. Because chances are they have the same information as their table group because they've been working together. And I have them find someone in the room that's not working at their table and have them compare the 1040 forms for Melinda, excuse me, not Melinda, we did Melinda together, for Edgar, Angela, and Marcus. And chances are if they have the same outcome, they're probably right. And if they don't, there's probably an error somewhere. And sometimes students will kind of sit down together and kind of compare and go over it together. So that's how I do the audit part of this, which isn't exactly, I guess I customize this assignment a bit. And it also makes it a little quicker to go over the information. The other just quick teacher tip with this, so I've told you how I implement it, which seems to work really well, but the other tip I have for you is to definitely reference the answer document for this activity. And if you don't have access to the answer documents, then you have to sign up for an NGPF teacher account and you will get access to the answer keys and they will verify that you are a teacher before granting you access to it. In the answer document, there is a bunch of extra information and teacher tips on how to effectively implement this in your classroom. I like this activity. It's great. Students like it because they're doing the actual tax forms. They have different scenarios. They have different outcomes. And I let them work collaboratively together.